Hello and welcome to the Wiltshire Caravans handover video for the 2023 Coachman Lusso 2. This is their flagship. Uh, this video will also work for the uh, Lusso 1 2023. Um, the only main difference is uh, with the 2 and the 1. The 2 has got two axles shown there uh, and the Lusso 1 has just the single axle. However, internally, despite there's a slight size difference, they're generally uh, the operational aspects are both the same. So starting at the back, as I always do, so you've got the high line brake light, marker lights, grab handles, although you'll do very well to pull this thing along. Then you've got your light clusters, so you've got uh, indicators, reversing lights, brake lights, running lights, reflectors there big area for a number plate. Obviously the corner studies this has got self-leveling so there's no uh, <coughs> leg winder as such. We're coming around to the offside. First part we get to is obviously the toilet area. So I'll, uh, I've already unlocked this so this is where the pink rinse part goes. Uh, so the you know the actual uh, reservoir for the flush, uh, you can use obviously the pink rinse or you can just use water. Um, if you do use the pink rinse, make sure that on occasion you do uh, rinse out thoroughly or flush out the system completely, uh, so it doesn't block the impeller within the toilet and stop it from flushing. Okay. So I just use an old, I well, used to use an old two-liter bottle, fill up with water, and just pour in. Next part. Uh, I will actually pause the video because uh, oh, God, I'm always uh, making a pig's ear of opening this with just one hand. So bear with me and we'll get to the cassette bit now. So the toilet cassette, this is the standard Thetford system. Um, this handle here lifts up and just pulls straight out. And then you can take the cassette out. Uh, so the cassette itself, I don't know how many litres it holds. Uh, but enough, you know when you need to empty it, a uh, light comes on in the toilet area. Um, to empty the toilet set out, this handle goes forward, take the cap off, lean it forward and press this just to release oh, everything that's inside. Uh, bearing in mind when you do take that cap off, leave it somewhere safe, you don't want that falling down the hole where you're pouring everything else. You'll also want to uh, rinse out the cassette, slide that back, open there, water goes in here, close up, close that again, swirl it around a bit and then repeat the process with the lid off, press that button to release any pressure and out it all comes. Okay. Make sure that uh, this part is closed. When you try to retreat, uh, when you try to reinstall the uh, cassette, that orange handle is telescopic, so you can uh, transport quite easily. Put it back in; that then goes in there. Particularly important for winterizing, but probably good practice to flush it through every now and then anyway. To empty the reservoir of the pink or just the water, there's a little pipe just up in there. That bun just take that out and gravity will do the rest and everything will come out. Uh, always best to have a bucket handy otherwise you're going to get wet. Okay. Okay so moving further along under here that's just a locker for the uh, under the bed so you've got some space to put things in there. You've got your two waste outlets so that's for the uh, two sinks so the kitchen and, sh and the bathroom and a shower and that goes into the waste master or if you've got a uh, fully serviced pitch obviously you, if you have enough pipe you can take that round uh, to put that in straight down to the drain okay you see there this one is fitted with auto engage power touch evolution motor movers all wheel drive uh, that's a separate video for that uh, which will be forwarded on so the wheels uh, alloy wheels uh, the wheel nuts are torqued up to 130 de uh, 30 <laughs> newton meters. Oh, I can't, can't get my words out today. Um, but I will show you on the weight plate where that is all uh, 
all explained for you. Moving on again, this is the, uh, the battery box, which may be a surprise to you, but it contains, if I can get into it, a battery. So, nice big AGM battery in there. And also, this is where the electric hookup is. You've got, just behind the hookup, there's a, an exterior coax for an aerial. I've also got here for the motor mover, again, I'm not gonna labor on this, but the motor mover isolator is there. It's put in that position, so you can't activate the motor mover whilst you're still plugged in. Okay. All right, so the water system. Whale water system. Uh, pump goes in there and I will just grab the pump and uh, show you how it connects. Okay, so here I am, complete with pump. Uh, this is the pump part that goes into the water. Uh, this part itself literally clips in there and that clicks down to hold it in place. Like I say, this bit goes into your aqua roll. As you can see, there's a little cut out there to put that so you don't drop the itself onto the floor to you know, get full of anything. Next, the shower, outside shower. Yeah, a little bit stiff to start with. All right, so this, uh, you've got a shower attachment with the caravan, an outdoor shower, it's cold water only. Uh, and as it's on the offside, you won't be in the awning. So dogs, boots, or exhibitionists who like cold water. Okay. This here, this is the Alder heating exhaust. So if you're using the heating uh, or hot water on gas, that is the exhaust area. Coming around to the front, three windows and the two lockers. This side's the gas locker. This side is uh, the hold everything else locker. moment this is the box for the hitch lock that we've uh, that we always put on all of our caravans two alco wheel locks uh, that's to do with the motor movers your water pump outside shower mains hose connection and your electric hookup we've also got a little uh, two small bottles of uh, of the toilet fluid just to, as a trial pack to get you going so to speak Right, so the chassis, it runs on the Alco chassis. Uh, it has the Alco ATC, uh, Alco trailer control. Uh, basically, there's a sensor underneath the chassis. So if the caravan does start to go out of shape, if it starts to sway at all, uh, which generally they don't, uh, the more modern ones, particularly twin axles. Um, but if it does go out of shape, it will dab the brakes on um, just to, to stabilize the caravan. Generally, the only time you should notice it is if you uh, go over a speed hump where the caravan might feel a little bit heavy for a, for a couple of seconds, uh, just showing the system is working. Okay, so on the near side, oh, I forgot to mention about the, in the gas uh, locker, there are two uh, area for two gas bottles. Uh, we generally recommend Cala, um, butane or propane. Um, but there's, uh, there's one pigtail, so to speak, we call them, uh, so gas connecting hose. Um, but you can change that, and we have to set them up for propane, but you can change them to butane if you wish. So it's got an outside barbecue point. Um, I, I do bang on about this quite a lot. Please, whatever you do, don't use a gas barbecue inside your awning. Uh, it's the fire and flame issue. Fire and, sorry, fire and fabric issue, uh, making the flames. Right, so you've also got an outdoor electric point, if I can just about see that. Yeah, so that you see that little gap there. And you can put the cord through there so you can run uh, an extension lead in your awning. Move along. There you go, you've got your awning light, you've got your uh, freezer and fridge um, vents. I was saying about the uh, weight plate earlier on. So there's your weight plate details. And on here, it's got the wheel bolt torque alloy one, 30 newton meters, and the steel 88. The steel 
is the spare wheel, which is underneath the caravan. Uh, tire pressures, 35 psi, um, and the tire size is on there. It's also got obviously the maximum plated weight and the massive run in order. So empty, that would be how uh, how heavy the caravan is. So pretty much, that's the outside done. Obviously, it's got they've got the one piece uh, door. Uh, so next, we'll go in and we'll have a look around at the flagship. All right, so stepping inside, the Lusso 2. I'll just have a quick wander around, show you uh, the caravan itself before I go into any further detail. Sorry about the reflection. You will, unfortunately, get reflection of me probably more than you like. Try not to show this to children, it might scare them. So there's obviously the toilet I was on about uh, when emptying the cassette. There is where the light comes on to show that it's uh, the toilet is full. You probably have got one or two weeds left in it, but uh, never take the risk. So, really nice size shower. I mean, everything about this caravan is lovely. Um, so no arguments about that. They call it their flagship, and I know why. Okay, so now what I'll do, get down to the nitty gritty and show you how everything works. Okay, so the main controls for this uh, Luso 2, and indeed the Luso 1, uh, above the door, um, as you can see there, this is the main control. Uh, there are a couple of symbols on there already. It shows that we are on the, plugged into the electrics. Uh, master switch is there, to press that, master on. It's very, very clear, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, at that point, for the lights, lights on, and the awning light on. Okay, so that's very simple. There are absolutely loads and loads of light switches, and half the fun of going around this caravan is finding out a, where the switches are <laughs> uh, and, and which bits they switch off. The one I did struggle to find earlier on was the main bedroom lights, but they're under there. So uh, above the bed, bed head, right in there. Also with the individual spotlights, these are really good. So if you press once, you'll get like an outer ring, press again, and the main light comes on. It's difficult to see because it's sunny outside at the moment, uh, but in the night time this will be lit up like black ball illuminations um, for the lights. Some of these lights as well, they also have uh, USB sockets in. Uh, the ones in the bed, above the bed I should say, have the USB sockets. So that's really handy for, for charging up overnight. Well, your phone that is, uh, not necessarily yourself. So back to the main display, so all of your uh, menus are accessed by these up and down arrows, uh, so press down at the moment, that's, well, the clock's not been set, um, but if I want to set that clock, I should do so. To set anything, the, like the enter button is that one. So get that pressed down and it says set, set clock hours, so however, whatever time you want to set it to. Okay. Press enter, it'll ask you to set clock minutes. Again, press, 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 and select the, the correct time. Okay. Once that's done, it'll stop flashing, and then you can move down through the menu. So you've got a settings menu. To access the settings menu, back to enter. So you've got the display, and if you press again, you've got to change the contrast, standby time, return to home is on, sound. Okay, so if you want to press sound, you can turn key tones on, press enter again, and then it's now off. Okay, alarm turn off. So, calibrating the water. Um, the, the water pump, uh, the standard well water pump, there is a calibration um, sequence uh, that they've been using for years. Um, I will send the video of that. Uh, I will need to double check whether the, this does calibrate the water in the same way. Uh, I will check that and to whoever buys one of these, 
uh, on, when, on the handover, we, we, yeah, I'll discuss that with them. The next one down is auto pump. That has nothing to do with the caravan. Uh, these are generic um, control panels. Uh, auto pump would be if you were on the, uh, had a motorhome, they work for the motorhome. Any notifications, come up there. Firmware, don't need to worry about that. But every time you make a change, you will have to save an exit. To do that, literally press the enter button again and you've saved an exit and you're back to your settings. Down again, you've got fill tank because this does have an internal tank of about 37 litres, which is underslung, so it doesn't take up any room under the bed box or much room. There is some pipe there you have to be aware of, um, but that's to fill the tank. If you press that now, pump must be on to fill the tank. Well, obviously, you have got a pump in there, but no water in there. Um, that's the water pump, but I'll show you that in a moment. So fill tank. Then we've got pump select. You've got the external pump, the one that I've shown you outside a little while ago. Select that again, and then it will go to the internal pump. So if you fill up your internal tank, you can just use the internal pump. External pump or internal pump. Water level, temperature, and the leisure voltage. So. Literally, it's just the clock, the settings, fill the tank, select your pump that you're going to use, the water level, that'd be how much is in the internal tank as a percentage, the internal temperature, as of whatever it is now, and how much the leisure voltage, leisure battery, I can't speak, leisure battery has available. We are plugged, <coughs> excuse me, we are plugged into the main, so that doesn't surprise me at all, it's 13.5. Then back to the time, so that is, the, the control panel, as I said, to turn the water pump on. Pump on, you can possibly hear that now. Pump off. Because uh, that's because I still have the pump in. Obviously, there's no water coming through. Um, but that's what that is. Whilst we're talking about the water, very important time, before I get onto the heating or anything else, uh, I want to show you the drain down uh, taps. Now, the drain down taps are underneath the sofas so I need to do some arranging so bear with me a second okay so underneath the front bench I will very quickly go through everything else so here you've got your breaker switches and your fuses so if anything pops check there if you have overused your electric uh, allocation from the pole they generally uh, trip out on the pole rather than on the uh, uh, on the caravan but not always so this is the compact 3030 uh, hot water boiler from Aldi. It's new for this year. Um, this has also got, beautifully, the Alda Flow. So you've virtually got permanent hot water. Fabulous system. Uh, yeah, really, really good. So yeah, your hot water, so showering is never a problem. Even if you have a family of four people going in one after the other, you'll always have plenty of hot water. Okay, so drain down valves. Just about see two valves there for the Alder flow and for the hot water there. When they're in the position they are in at the moment, that is draining out all water from the system. So when they're horizontal, they're draining out all of the system. Uh, when you're going to use the caravan, you need to put them to vertical. Uh, sorry, vertical means open, horizontal means uh, closed so water will come in. So apologies for the confusion. There is also one more just down there. So they all need to be up, particularly for winterizing, very important, we need, you don't want any water in here whatsoever. Okay, so basically in the up position, let's not confuse myself, up position, draining water out, keep the taps open and happy days. Uh, when you want to close, when you want to use, put water into the caravan, close those, so put them down as in down okay there's also some gas isolators there however if you're using propane you can just turn it off at the bottle um, and then to just to make sure you've cleared all of the gas I usually just light a burner burns for about half a second uh, before so you know you're clear right okay I'm just going to pause again, put everything back together. Okay, so we're all back together again. All right, back up to the controls. So we've seen the control panel there. The next is the Alder heating. 
So, like I said, it's the new compact 3030 system. Power on, exactly the same as it used to be. But now the display is somewhat different. I will send a, a separate video from Alda themselves. Um, however, there has been a little bit of confusion because on the Alda system, it's showing about split regions, uh, which as yet, uh, none of the caravans actually have. Uh, however, so front screen, change of temperature, literally up or down. It is as simple as that, however warm or cold you want the uh, caravan to be. Then press menu, you'll get to a screen, you've got page one of three, where you can set a night mode, day mode, the air conditioning, you can set, I can try to, <laughs> no I can't open that, I have to do it on the air con button, I'll show you that very shortly. Uh, so auto pump, and all various things. Lots of different settings, uh, which is why we give you a book and send you the, the video direct from Alda, so there's no ambiguity. Um, however, very simply, press that, you get to the page to go to one, three now. Press again, and we get to choose. Okay, so this one uh, has light on it, so light. That actually changes the brightness of the light on the air conditioning unit. So they've got a couple of LED lights across, and you can change the brightness on there. Go back. So that's the temperature in here at the moment. Energy. So we have an option of off, one kilowatt. Um, that generally uh, won't warm things up particularly quickly, um, but it, you can set uh, back to one kilowatt when everything is as warm as you want it to be. Two kilowatts will get things warmed up pretty quickly at about 8.8 .8 amps, I think. Um, so that will warm things up pretty quickly. If you do have enough power, three kilowatts, that's the maximum. Uh, that will warm up everything very, very quickly. You could also turn the gas on as well. We haven't got any gas connected at the moment, but uh, that would uh, also do that. But my recommendation, two kilowatts till it's all warmed up, then you're going to go down to one, okay? Menu again, hot water, you've got off. Well, we've got no water in here, so I've got it off. On or boost. If you press boost for 30 minutes, you'll just have uh, the water, hot water boosting. Um, not sure if you're going to really need it in here because you've got the Alder flow system. Um, but if you do boost the hot water, um, bear in mind that will take all the power on that the Alder system is using and will turn the heating off for that 30 minutes. Okay, so there it goes back to the standard setting. Um, nice and easy to use like I say I'll send you the video and you've got the book as well okay uh, but if you do have any questions as always feel free to give us a call on 01373 752100 uh, and we will help in any way we can um, I did mention that the, the caravan has self-leveling so the actual self-leveling um, control panel is on the left hand side of the door as you're looking at it um, this is again a separate video for that, but that's where the panel is. We've got air conditioning controls, as I said. You can link them to the uh, Alder system. It was on when I first came in and turned everything on. But to power it on, so you've got the remote here. That's the power on button pointed towards the uh, system. And I'm hoping we're going to see a couple some red lights flashing. Going on, it's linked to the Alder system. So currently, this is showing. If I can do this with one hand, uh, that's heat. Your various modes. So that's currently on heat. You've got auto, recycle, or on cold. Uh, autos, I would have thought probably the best one to go on to, but again, that's up to you. You've got the temperature control here, and that. Well, it's just yeah, lovely. To turn it off though, point it up at the, give it a couple of seconds and that will then turn off. There you go, I'm trying to do this one handed, well, <laughs> okay, 
So, main controls, so your control panel and the Alder heating and hot water panel sorted. Um, this is obviously just your seating area. TV will go here, uh, underneath, in this cupboard. If I could get to it, yeah, you just about see that. You've got your uh, 12 volt system, or you've got your coaxes there, and a and a plug for your telly. Uh, this also has a DAB radio. Uh, has USB uh, and Bluetooth, as well as an auxiliary connection. Um, these this does turn into a uh, double bed. This comes out. rearrange the cushions also underneath here if you lift this up a safe okay so if you have got any money left after buying one of these you've got a safe to put it in <laughs> okay right. Fri uh, flippancy aside right okay so the kitchen area so you have got a flap which comes up to give you some extra working space. And you've got obviously your mixer taps. The taps are all open because the drain down valves are open at the moment. So bear that in mind that when you close the drain down valves and go to put the water on, make sure you close your taps first. Cupboard space, you will not be wanting for cupboard space. Oh, one at a time. So you've got the cupboard there. That comes out. Yeah, fabulous. Also can open from this side as well. Uh, round sink bowl, stainless steel. Um, some people get uh, washing up bowls. You can get the collapsible washing up bowls, which we do sell. There's a little plug for the shop there. Um, microwave oven. Yeah, it's a microwave, I'm not going to teach you how to use a microwave. A uh, nice bonus point here though, we've got uh, an extractor fan. Uh, which you can either set plus and minus, that's how much you want it on. It's also got a light on underneath, so that's nice. Yeah. Also has a clock on it, uh, which is... Uh, not linked to the other one, so that has to be set manually. Cooker, it's the Thetford cooker, so you've got the one electric hob, three gas burners. The gas burners uh, will definitely not work when the uh, lid is down. The hob probably doesn't, but just to make sure that you don't knock anything accidentally, underneath there is a plug, so you can unplug that electric uh, hot plate just so you can make sure you, don't, you, know, you never have to worry about it. So all your controls are standard, light for the oven, there's your spark and oven and grill separate as you would expect in the caravan. Okay turning around to the fridge freezer and a horrible looking thing in the front I'll try and get out of the way. Right, so power on the fridge and freezer. Hold. So we've got various modes here. So you can, it runs on gas. Right, so on the battery. That battery is not for your leisure battery, that is for the car alternator. As long as the fridge is already cold, that will maintain temperature uh, when you're plugged into your car, as long as you have the right connections on the tow bar. So if you have the 13 pin, and it's all set up correctly, you should maintain the temperature for the fridge as you're traveling. You can run on gas. Obviously, like I said before, we have no gas connected at the moment, but that will run on gas. Run on electric, but if you keep thinking that you'll forget to change it over onto the car battery, go onto auto, uh, as soon as you plug the car in, that will then transfer over to the battery. Then to change, temperature simple as that okay nothing complicated really lovely um, opens from both sides 
nice size fridge freezer. Just a quick demonstration there. That's pretty much it for the kitchen area. Right, bedroom. Uh, like I say, it's lots of space. I know the bed's not out fully at the moment, uh, but a, a really beautiful space. Lots of cupboard space above, a couple of drawers next to the bed, a couple of shelves. Like I say, those lights uh, turn on as such, and you've got the USBs, uh, but the real space, uh, obviously you've got a couple of points for, you've got points for TV and some electric points. The wardrobe itself, this is where the uh, Alder fluid reservoir is, but this opens up on both sides for a really nice size uh, wardrobe. More, oh, more drawer space, cupboard space, lovely, really beautiful. Okay, so bathroom, as I said, I showed you the, uh, the toilet. Rem um, quick reminder, when you're using the toilet, these do swivel around to wherever you want to go. Make sure when you've opened the flap, you close it again, otherwise you will struggle to get the um, uh, cassette out and you might ruin basically rip it out and, and damage the cassette so make sure that's closed hot rail hot towel rail um, be careful it does get very very hot if it doesn't if it's only if it's warm at the top and really hot at the bottom just needs bleeding like an ordinary radiator okay so again mixer taps cupboard space really lovely shower Really nicely done. So pretty much, I'll show you the blinds, how the blinds work. Uh, they're pretty much all the same except for the roof blinds. So blinds down, blackout blinds first. Down again for the fly screens. Same on all of the windows except this front one where it's just got um, a blackout blind because that window doesn't open. The sunroofs. Blackout blinds. Fly screens. That pretty much is it. Um, but whilst I am talking about the uh, Lusso 2 and the Lusso 1 indeed, um, like I say, the Lusso 1, it, the layout's the same, everything is the same. The fridge is slightly smaller, the front area is slightly smaller, but it's still an eight foot wide luxury caravan um, so these do come with the aircon is standard uh, comes with a motorhome wi-fi system um, which is 5g ready so it's 4g but it's 5g ready the antenna is 5g um, yeah just a beautiful caravan. anyway uh, if you do have any questions uh, or want to know availability of the caravan please do give me a call 01373 752 100 option one for the sales team and we'll uh, see what we can do to help in any way shape or form I did forget to show you this though all of the cupboards are really uh, soft clothes for this just lovely just does exactly what you want it to do okay so if you do like these videos, please do uh, like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, the more the merrier. Like I say, any questions, do please feel free to give us a call. Thanks very much. Uh, see you again for the next one.